All right, here we go. Yes, we are live. Awesome. I am here with Deb and it's very exciting because we just met a few weeks ago and I voluntold you, <laughs> to, I suggested nicely uh, about joining me in the hot seat and you totally jumped in. You were totally game. So thank you for doing that because um, it's not an easy thing to accept. <laughs> And I'm, I'm happy to have you. So Deb, tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and then we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty. I am a blogger. I'm also an author. I'm also, also have um, courses where I go into them and I'm offering group coaching now. So I do that now too. But basically I serve busy moms with like easy and simple household hacks that create some confidence so that they can get out and spend more time with their families later on to cut down that time in the kitchen. Nice. Everybody loves a good hack, right? If it can save some time, for sure, because time is a hot commodity, <laughs> especially for moms. Um, so what got you into this what came first? Was it the writing, the blogging and stuff like that? And then you moved into coaching? The blog came first, the author came second, and then now the coaching has come into it because I'm finding that, that women need a little bit more help than to just read it. Yes, very true. And so how do you do that? Like what, in what ways are you able to do that? I am able to either go through the course and then help them set up their affirmations. Like I have an affirmation, they I help them set it up correctly to fit their needs based on all these different categories that are going on in their lives. And I also have an academy where I offer one training a month, be it whether it's cleaning the kitchen, we simplify it, but we also go through and we modify that to your needs to hopefully fit a schedule, a schedule that'll fit you and your family. Awesome. So you kind of dive deep into each person you work with and you help create and simplify their life essentially is what you're doing. Correct. Awesome. So we talked a little bit before about where maybe it feels um, a little scary or uh, a little wavy, let's say, um, when it comes to talking about your business. Why do you think that is? Because you have no problem talking, right? Talking comes easily to you. And obviously writing too, words come easily to you, uh, especially if, if you're doing all that writing, which is amazing. And I love that. Um, so what do you think is holding you back? Well, I've thought it was mindset in the past, but I've done a lot of mindset set work and I've gotten over that. I think right now it's, I'm going over my, my business now and I'm really trying to tune in to that mom, that one specific mom with the certain age kids and I'm trying to really narrow it down to, to help them better. And I'm kind of thinking in my head, how I can go deeper into my life. And I guess part of it is being vulnerable too. Ah, that's a big one, right? We all struggle with that. Do you think it could be the fear that someone is going to stump you and you're not going to know how to help them? No, because if I don't know, I will research it and I will mom test the idea to no end because I don't want them to have to go through it. They don't have the time. That's right. my job. That's what I'm there for. Right. Okay. So that's not, that's not a problem. Um, Cause I know sometimes other coaches I've spoken to that that's a little bit of a, a niggling fear in the, the back of their mind. And that sort of plays into that imposter syndrome, right? Right. Or what if there's something I can't do? Um, which, I mean, I always bring up you know, doctors don't have all the answers. And they work until they figure it out or they work together to figure it out. So we can't be expected to know all things all the time, even if we are an expert in a certain area. 
So then it's the vulnerability of, do you think it's the vulnerability of talking about what you do for them? I think that's part of it. And part of it is really getting clear on the ideal client. Ah, that's super important. Let's talk about that for a second. So right now, who is your ideal client? The entrepreneur mom that works with home from home. She's 25 to 45 and she has kids like four to eight at home, constantly underfoot. Okay. So um, do you have a clear picture in your mind of what that mom looks like? I think I need to get more clear on that. And I've recently looked at my stats, so I kind of know what they want now. Yeah. It actually helps if you could find a picture of something that encapsulates what you think that client avatar is, right? Is it a mom with a kid on their hip with disheveled hair, you know, cereal, chain necklace, and, you know, another kid throwing a tantrum on the floor? You want to be super, super specific. And it's, it, I was going to say it's funny, but it's not funny. Um, it's, it's something we all struggle with because we tend to gloss over the details Mm -hmm. But that's super important because your messaging then goes out to that person you have in your mind. So I've known people to actually draw their avatar and have it up somewhere. Mm -hmm. I can't draw, so that just wouldn't work for me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'll, I'll look through images and I'll find pictures. Yeah, that is who my ideal client is so that I have a clear picture. It's kind of like on a vision board right? When you have a vision board and you put whatever it is that you desire, then those are the things that you're manifesting and you're attracting. So you can do that with your ideal clients, find a picture, find something that encapsulates what that person is to you and put it in front of you so that every day you are seeing that mom and your messaging is going directly to that mom. What you are talking about is to her. And you'll notice that you'll become even more clear with how you are wording your messages with, you know, even intonality and stuff when speaking, because we speak to one person differently than we speak to another. So when you have a clear idea of who that person is, they're going to hear you. I like that idea. I think that would really help because I am a little wishy-washy in my picture. Ah, excellent. Right. And put it up in front of you or on your desk or somewhere that you, you look every day. And even if it's a, and you do affirmations, right? So I'm sure you do things like that, where you put affirmations in places and mm -hmm. It, it can be even a subliminal, you know, it's there. You don't have to read it, but it reminds your brain of what that affirmation is trying to tell you. So that client avatar is the same thing. If it's up somewhere, then it's always in your subconscious and working so that your message becomes super clear. I like that. That way too, um, you know, because I, I understand the feeling of vulnerability you, and I said this to Allison last week as well. Every time you are writing a message to those moms, right? You're posting something, you're doing a live video. Keep telling yourself that you are doing them a disservice by not sharing your gifts, by not sharing your business. That is true. Right? Because you know they need you. That's why you started doing this. Somewhere along the line, many of us start doubting that. And then we start putting things out with a question mark at the end hmm. instead of an exc exclamation point. Right. And it's not even an intentional thing. It's just, it's that imposter syndrome. It's that feeling vulnerable and, you know, kind of, 
you know, here, just take, take a little look at what I do instead of boom, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I like that. So tell us again what you do with all that in mind and take a second, take a few breaths, breathe it in, see that client, that ideal client in your mind. Okay. I serve busy entrepreneur moms who are struggling to find a simpler, easily way, easier way to do household hacks, to simplify their life, to create the confidence so that they can go in and have more time with their family or do the things they want to do. Awesome. Now I want you to say it like you are telling a room full of childless university students. Okay. Okay. This I know I do need to get clear on and more comfortable with. Okay. I help busy entrepreneur women to simplify their chores at home so that you have the confidence to go out and have more time, whether it's with your family or out with your friends or doing what you love to do. Wow. Could you feel a difference? Actually, I did because I changed to the fit the audience. Right. And all of a sudden you became the expert because you were speaking to a room full of university kids, uh, well, kids, university young adults, no children, and you were assertive and you were sure of what it is that you do. I got a question for you. Sure. <laughs> Does that mean I need to rethink my audience? <laughs> no, no, it's just, okay. I'm trying to show you the difference because how you spoke to those childless university students should be the, the confidence and the surety that you have in what you do to be able to say it like that to the moms. I got it. So now try combining that. So keep that confidence, keep that the expert feeling that you have, but now tell the, your ideal client, those moms. Hmm. Okay. I help busy entrepreneur moms like you with kids at home all running around and you're tr struggling trying to get your, your work done at home. I've got easier, simpler household ways of doing things because you don't have the time. You need more time to spend with your family and do the things what you want to do so that you guys have the memories. Awesome. Awesome. So you maybe bring a little bit of that university childless student into your avatar so that it changes the tonality of your voice, hmm. right? So in, in your messaging moving forward, you know who your ideal client is. You have a clear picture of who that is. Bring in the, the group of people that you can be assertive to. Because when you pictured that room of university students, you mm -hmm. knew you know more than they do, right? There was absolutely no doubt in how you presented yourself because they don't have kids, they don't know the struggle. And you know, you're older, wiser, you've got life under your belt. So you need to do the same thing with those moms. Hmm. right? You have the experience, you have the know-how, you are the expert, and you need to be sure that they can hear and understand that when you are talking to them. And that's where I think I need to play around with that message more and really feel it. Yes. Find the right words for me. Well, not the right words, but the words that fit with the confidence in me. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly it. Oh, animals. Hugo. Um, yes, that is exactly what you need to do. Of course, now I can't find. 
Hugo. I love my dog. I love my dog. <laughs> so sometimes we just have to play around with it, right? And see what gets different engagement. So when you're, let's say, doing a live on your page, change it up every now and then and experiment. Do more people listen when I am, you know, I'm hitting the gavel and I'm saying, this is what you need, or do I get more engagement when I'm speaking to that disheveled mom who just is at her wits end, who needs me, right? When you change up how it is you're presenting yourself to them and you're, you're sort of gauging what that, well, you're gauging the engagement that you're getting then it will help you be even more clear moving forward. Sometimes we have to play around and see what hits. So speak to the need and then speak to, I forgot what you said. See if that works or speak to. Yeah, so, you know, put a message out that, you know, you're, you're talking like, the expert and you're talking like affirmatively, this is what you need. This is what we can do together. We're going to make your life simpler. We're going to give you these hacks and see what the engagement is like with that. And then do another one where it's, it's a little bit more intimate and it's moms. I know what you're going through. Oh, okay. I know that, you know, you are at the end of your rope and you just don't know what to do. You seem to never have time for yourself, even less time with your family, and your whole life is wrapped up in being a mom. What if I can offer you a bit of a reprieve from that so that you're creating memories and not creating more dishes? Whatever, right? I it now. So, it's just changing the tonality or the intention and see who bites, see, right? Because it could be two very different people, both needing you, but they need a different approach. I get it now. I get what you're saying. Thank you. No problem. Um, okay. So haha, last time, let's go back and, and do it again, do what you said, like what it is you do and how you help. And let's, let's do it a couple times with different intentions. So first intent, let's make it that these women have no choice. They're going to get your help, whether they want it or not. Okay. So, so tell them this is what I got, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Okay. Hello, busy mom. I have an easier, simpler way of doing your household chores. I know you don't have the time to be everywhere and everything. I've got ways for you to solve that laundry problem. We're gonna take care of your organization in your kitchen. It's not gonna take that much time. This is what's going to happen on the training every month in the, in the academy. We're going to set you up. We're going to set it up to fit your lifestyle at your time frame, so that you do have that time later on to spend time with the family, play those games with the kids, take them outside, go for a walk in the park. Yeah. You're going to get in my trainings. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Now do it again. And this time speak to that mom who is just on the brink of tears. Okay. Hello, busy mom. I know, I know where you, where you're at right now. Just sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, I've got all this work to do. The laundry's piled up. I've got dishes in this in the dishwater I washer. I still got to get done. I've got the little one underfoot. 
The diaper needs to be changed. I have a kid at home too, but right now he's older. I went through that. My kid was active. He went on, went, was, was, I had to watch him all the time. I had to struggle putting my own laundry in the washer with him around. So I know where you're at. I know you're at your wit's end. You're sitting there, your hair's disjoveled. You're, you're just, you're like, I don't know where to go next. And you sit down, you plop yourself on the couch, you're in front of that TV and your business is sitting there waiting for you because you're thinking to yourself, if this kid screams one more time, I'm gonna lose it. That is where I come in and I can help with that. Let's get this chores done easier, simpler. We'll even talk about your mindset as we set this up to get you in the right frame of mind. So stop struggling and get the help you need. Yeah. Yeah. Already you're way more confident in your message. Right? And that's thanks to you. Thank you. This is what I do, right? This and sometimes it's just little tweaks. I always joke that sometimes, you know, we see the cup here. And all we need to do is shift it. Oh, there, we see the line. Okay, right? So I'm there to give you a little shift to go, oh, yes, that makes sense, <laughs> right? We've got it innately, but sometimes it's hard for us to see it within ourselves. Um, also remember, being vulnerable in front of your audience isn't a bad thing because people respond to vulnerability because you seem real. You're a person then. You struggle too, right? Whereas we tend to think if somebody's too perfect, they're not real, right? We look at celebrity moms and we're like, oh, must be nice to have 14 nannies and staff at your house and yeah, I'd look like that too if I had a personal trainer after having a baby, right? <laughs> so when, when we can show our audience that we're human and that we have struggles too, that's what attracts people, right? We're like, oh, she gets it. She gets me. So don't be afraid to show a bit of vulnerability as well. Yeah, I, I like that. I need to uh, think more on all that with the client side and what the mom's really struggling with, what her actual day is like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And sometimes that will just come in having conversations with them. Right. Right. And that's where you need to use your instincts to listen and, and see and ask the right questions and be supportive and then you can figure out how you need to talk to that mom and say, hey, I have a program that you might wanna consider. And this program is gonna simplify your life, free up time and help you feel like a productive mom without the stress without all these, whatever, right? So it's, it's, it's about talking, but it's also about listening. And so that's what I mean. Like when you do different posts with different intentions, see what the engagement is, what people's responses are, really listen to what they're telling you. And that'll help shape how you move forward and what messaging is working best at reaching those ideal clients for you. I agree with that. I really need to get clear on that. Well, you're on your way. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this. I hope it wasn't uh, too nerve wracking. <laughs> No, I love it. I got some great advice. Thank you for putting me in the hot seat. I love it. I love the hot seat. 
So great. Well, I'm going to be posting this on YouTube so you can share it with other people and we can help others yep. learn the same lessons, which is amazing. Yes. And uh, I look forward to seeing where you take this and keep us posted too. you know, do, do some trials and then get back to us and say, Hey, you know what? I did this, this worked, this didn't work. And, and let's, let's help you get there. Thank you. I appreciate the help. Awesome.